Well, as we promised, we were uh, we had planned to talk about STEM education national consultation. The Trinidad and Tobago STEM education national consultation will be hosted by Shell Trinidad in partnership with the Ministry of Education. This takes place on Wednesday, 16th May 2018 at the Hyatt Regency. Joining us to tell us all we can expect, we have the external relations at Shell, Kelly Marie Patel, and we also have uh, Elijah Pay of Sakoda Serve Limited. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. So what does STEM stand for? Well, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And STEM Education is the alignment of those subjects. So we more or less bring it under one umbrella to deliver it in a, a, a very practical way to students so that they will have a greater appreciation for not just the theory that they're learning in school, but as well as the um, the application which it will have in the world of work later on. Great. Ms. Patel, what is this all about? So, uh, Shell has been sponsoring or funding this program for the past four and a half years. And one of the outputs that we had was this national consultation. And it's pretty much bringing together various stakeholders, including the Ministry of Education, but also from the industry, from technical institutions, the energy sector, um, to come together to sort of discuss the idea of STEM and how we can integrate it into the classrooms and for it to become a part of our curriculum in the school and education system. And how close are we to achieving this? I would say we have some time to go still. This is one of the first steps. Um, what we're doing is using this program that we've been implementing through Sakoda Sur for the past four years to gather some data and understand what sort of impacts we've been having so that that way we can feed that into the policy making that Ministry of Education can then take into their hands as well. Great. So fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Pei, how important is this initiative? This, this, is, this initiative is a, is a very, very important one. I really can't stress the, how significant it is to the development of Trinidad and Tobago in terms of our, our Vision 2030. Um, STEM education what it really does, it seeks to impact some critical skills which students um, need to develop. Some of those skills include your critical thinking skills, your logic and reasoning skills, and your problem solving skills. And if we are really serious about um, diversific diversification and diversifying our economy, one of the ways in which we will do that is by investing in our human capital. And our human capital will, will then be able to um, innovate. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's what we're really trying to, 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 to do, develop uh, a nation of, of thinkers so that our young leaders will be able to go forward and um, bring new ideas to the, to the forefront and, of course, develop our country in, 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 in that way. So if we get into the nitty-gritty, of, of the program. How is it structured? Is it a hands-on approach? It's, it's very much so a hands-on approach. There are four critical e elements of the program, four different um, for, um, faucets. Um, there is the student support program, the, um, which, which aims at students from forms one to three. There is the teacher training program, which seeks to impact teachers and the way they deliver STEM subjects. Um, there is the um, technical training program, which exposes students from forms four to five to various technical institutes throughout Trinidad and Tobago. For instance, we have the Kenson School of Technology in San Fernando, MIC in, in Macoya, and so forth. Um, we have also ex recently expanded to Tobago, so some students in Tobago are also being exposed to STEM and STEM education. Um, and also, um, Shell has has also upgraded a few labs throughout Trinidad and Tobago because it's very important that these, these students and, and, and these schools have the medium or the various media to expand and learn in the classroom. Okay. And of course, the facilities, it's, it's very important for them to, to, to do that. Um, Ms. Patel, so he spoke about upgrading labs and that sort of thing. How yeah. expensive is a project like this? And if government comes on board, how much would they re be required to put out? So it can be quite expensive. Um, we have upgraded approximately four, five school labs, actually. Um, and each of them, depending on the needs that they may have to address. So it can be from infrastructural to just materials and equipment 
So it can range anywhere between 500 TT, 500,000 TT, sorry, to uh, up to a million, depending on what their needs are. So some of the equipment can be quite expensive. Um, but what we have seen, though, is some of the labs, especially in the um, non-government assisted schools, right would have infrastructural challenges. So those are where a lot of the funds can go into to get them to sort of an OSHA compliant lab where they have no um, safety issues within the lab as well. I'd like to hear from you in terms of um, the importance of a project like this. So this, this is one of our most significant um, social investment programs at Shell, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, it falls under our global theme actually. So from Shell Global, STEM is one of the major social investment themes. And it is a critical component of our social investment portfolio. And we look at it similarly to what Elijah would have said in, in the sense that we are creating those innovative thinkers and those critical thinkers within society to address real world, pro real world problems in the future, especially as we move towards diversification. Coming from the energy sector, we all know that there's a significant importance that we all rely on um, the energy sector. And one of our aims is to contribute more to, towards the economic diversification of our economy. So STEM plays a, a, an important role within the school system to just teach students how to think critically, solve problems, be collaborative amongst their peers, and just be contribute to our society, essentially. Great. And uh, Mr. Pei, who is invited to this consultation? We have already um, invited uh, v various um, um, segments of, of society. So we obviously have invited the, the, the Ministry of Education. They are a, 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 a core stakeholder in this, of course. Um, we have invited civic society so various companies will be will be on board um, attending the 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 conference um, some of our facilitators who um, um, who implement the program so the program it's it's on alternate Saturdays um, so some of those facilitators will also be attending and of course, we will have students. They are the core stakeholders in this. Um, they, they are the most important stakeholder, as well as parents will be attending. Okay. And we also have sure. um, tertiary institutions and the energy sector. We have from um, some of the technical institutions as well, too, and the, like the manufacturing association, et cetera. Those would have been um, some stakeholders that we would have had. Great. When I, uh, you spoke about teacher training and technical training, these training, this, this has already been ongoing? Yeah. So the body teacher training and the, and the technical training um, program, those things are ongoing. So the teacher training program, we would have recently had a workshop with about 40 to 50 teachers at um, uh, one of the UTT campuses was, was the venue. Um, at that program, we were able to get teachers together for a couple of days. And those teachers would have more or less brainstormed in the various ways that they can improve um, the delivery of STEM within their classrooms. So it, it was more or less, more or less, sorry, of a, a great, I don't want to call it a fun day for teachers, because it was really, it was really amazing to see how those teachers would have interacted with each, with, with each other and the type of um, knowledge that they would have gained from those two days. Um, so that is just one example of, a t of, of the teacher training program at work. The technical training program that also runs on, all, uh, I think, um, not, not an alternate Saturday, sorry, that the technical training program runs on every Saturday. Um, we have, for instance, one group of students at the NESC in Coover, where they're learning various things about the industry, such as blueprinting and AutoCAD and so forth. And, and this, these are students in Form 4. So they're getting exposed at a, at a pretty early age. But um, what one of the aims of that really is so that they will be able to, um, to have a greater appreciation of the theory that they're learning in school. And of course, when they are ready to move on to whether it be tertiary education, they would have already had a, a fair appreciation and a fair uh, bit of knowledge on the topics 
um, that, they, that, that, they, that, they, that they are going to live. Great. All right. So we've been chatting with Elijah Pay of Sakoda Serve Limited and Kelly Marie Patel, External Relations at Shell. We'd like to continue this conversation just after this very short break. Step into the digital dimension, then download the CTV mobile app free on your mobile device. For 10 years, CTV has provided coverage of every national event, showing the faces and capturing the life of Trinidad and Tobago as it unfolds. Now, be in step with us from the palm of your hand and follow us in real time 24-7 for news, culture and sweet TNT life. Download the CTV mobile app today via Android Play and Apple stores. On any given day, at any given time, you can have your say on Talk City 91.1 FM. Call in, text in, send us an email. All our shows are fully interactive. Whether we're talking politics, sports, current affairs, social issues, culture and the arts, stay in the know with our daily news bulletin and breaking news updates. We're committed to keeping you informed about the world around you. And yes, we entertain you too with the best Kaiso, Steel Pan and local and regional music. We are your address for talk. Talk City 91.1 FM and TalkCity91FM.com Welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago. We've been chatting with Elijah Pay of the Sakoda Serve Limited and Kelly Marie Patel, External Relations at Shell. And as I mentioned earlier, the Trinidad and Tobago STEM Education National Consultation will be hosted by Shell Trinidad in partnership with the Ministry of Education on Wednesday, 16th, May 2018 at the Hyatt Regency. Of course, uh, as we were speaking earlier, Ms. Uh, Ms. Kelly Marie Patel mentioned the need for diversification uh, as it pertains to this high dependence on the energy sector. And I'd like to, to uh, continue that conversation with you this morning. How important is it at this point in time in terms of diversification and achieving diversification through this program? Well, as, we, as you mentioned, the reliance on the energy sector can only go on for so long. And we do need to find new avenues of revenue streams for the government for them to be able to sustain our country, essentially. Um, so. A program like this would contribute to diversification in so many ways because it, jo it shows students who are pretty much the foundation how we can apply sciences to the real real problems that we are having right now. So any of the societal pro problems that we are having, um, infrastructural, etc. It helps them to understand how they can then be creative and be innovative in their yes. solutions to find real world solutions to find solutions to the real-world real problems, problems that we're having yeah, right now. Most definitely. Yeah. I'd like to find out about the response. You said it has been ongoing for about four and a half years. Yes. How have schools been responding to this? And I'd like to ask both of you. So we've had some great feedback from schools in general. Um, a few of the programs, a few of the schools who have been in the program for the full four years mm -hmm. have indicated that they've seen changes, not just in the teachers, but the students as well too and the interest yes. level in sciences yes, has exactly. actually increased in some of the schools as well as the, um, the marks, the school marks. You know, they, they've seen improvements. Those schools that have had their labs upgraded have been extremely grateful to, for it as well because they were at the point where their labs were almost non-operational. So they've been extremely grateful as well. But we have been receiving a lot of positive feedback. It will take time and, you know, at Shell, most of our social investment programs are at least three to five years because we understand that to see any sort of change or result in any kind of social or education program, it will take time to sort of just sink into the ethos of the school, yeah. essentially. Sure. <laughs> and what are your thoughts on the response that you've received so far? Uh, the, the, the response has been um, exceptional um, to date we have impacted approximately 1,400 students or so wow. since the inception of the program. Currently, we have approximately 1,200 students in the program. Um, it's, it's more or less in um, the Victoria District, as well as the Port of Spain District, as well as a, a couple um, outlying communities, as well as Tobago. 
Now, a, a major element of the program, which we, we, did, not, we did not mention, is the Bayshree program, mm -hmm. um, which, which Rachel has um, funds. And that more or less looks at the fence line communities in which Shell operates. And they, they select the top performing SEA students and they fund them literally from throughout secondary school and at this point to tertiary education as well. Um, so the program has the ability to expand and um, develop those rural communities because of the human capital and the human investment that is currently taking place, um, as well as the general society because of the student support program, technical training program. And of course, a major element is looking at developing teachers. Um, of course, they, we always hear the saying that teachers ought not to be teaching the same way that they were taught, right? Um, that, that, that they were taught. So that is what a teacher training program seeks to do. It's upgrading the skills and the tool sets of, of those teachers. Um, with that said, the program also has significantly impacted the behavior of, of students as well. So we, we are speaking of the academic, um, the academic performance of, of, of students, but there are life skills that are also being impacted because we have that um, built into the program as well, life skills and how they ought to, for instance, budget. Um, yeah, so how, how they should budget, how they should um, react in certain situations and so forth. So we have literally seen students who um, teachers were complaining constantly about their behavior pattern changed over time because of, because of the intervention of the program. So again, we are seeing that programs like these have um, such a major impact on, on the household. So previously, we would have heard Pastor Dutton speak about the importance of the household and, um, and its impact on society. And programs like these are core to the development of our society. Wow, that's, <laughs> well, you, I just got sold. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent. Thank you so much. What are your closing comments at this time? Well, we would just like to thank you all for having us today. And we just really hope that from the STEM consultation, we get some uh, recommendations on how we can move forward as a society in partnership with the Ministry of Education to really shape the education system and shape the future, essentially, yeah. of our country. Exactly. And your closing comments? Um, I would, uh, very, very similar to, to Kelly, um, we would hope that the, the National Consultation um, with the, the various um, members of, of society, we really hope that we can come together um, to create this draft policy document um, so that our Vision 2030 may be realized and hopefully STEM can have a significant impact or influence in the shaping of our future. Do you all still have space? The, in terms of the consultation? Yes, the consultation. The, the consultation, we we have opened it up to streaming for the public. Okay. Yeah, it's it's open for streaming to the public via our Facebook page, Trinity Tobago Sam Trinity Tobago Shell STEM program. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, however, the actual consultation will be closed for the various members of society. So, for instance, we have academic institutions, the students, the parents. Um, business, the, the business community as well, and the Great. Ministry of Education, of course. All right, thank you so much. Always, a, well, it's the first time I'm seeing you. It's <laughs> such a pleasure chatting with you. And of course, this takes place on Wednesday, 16th May, 2018, at the Hyatt Regency. News is up next. Stay tuned. <laughs>